what's up everybody? So today we are going to be continuing my series of formulating cosmetics for beginners. So if you didn't know, my channel is all about how to make homemade skincare products. So if that stuff interests you, then subscribe because I have a ton of information on my channel and I have a lot more coming. I have a lot of videos already in this series. So if you haven't watched any of them, I will link in the description box to the playlist. So you can just binge watch all these videos and be caught up with where we are now. So today we are going to be talking about surfactants and I do believe that surfactants are one of the most important ingredients in making cosmetics. So I do think it's really important to understand what they are, but I think they're kind of confusing. But if you really just take a second and learn about it, you'll realize it's pretty simple to understand them. It's just kind of kind of confusing starting out. So first I want to read to you guys the definition of what a surfactant is. And it's gonna sound kind of confusing, but I'll break it all down to you. But quickly before we get into this, I do wanna mention that I do have a blog that goes right along with my YouTube videos. My blog is on my Patreon, so to access the blog, it's $5 a month. But with that $5 a month, you'll also get early access to my videos. So I actually have a lot of videos that are unlisted right now that a lot of my viewers can't see, but my patrons can. But I already have the blog written out to this video. So I'm gonna be looking down at using this blog as a reference just so I don't forget to mention anything and I don't leave anything out because there's a lot to cover here. So the definition of a surfactant is compounds that lower the surface tension or interfacial tension between two liquids, between a gas and a liquid, or between a liquid and a solid. Surfactants may act as detergents, wetting agents, emulsifiers, foaming agents, and dispersants. But I do believe that most of us commonly know surfactants as that foaming, bubbly, lathery ingredient in our like shampoos or face washes that cleanses our skin, which that is what a surfactant is, but a surfactant is also a lot more than that or could be something different. Surfactants could also be the main ingredient in your hair conditioner, which is the ingredient that helps make your hair really soft, smooth, and and detangle it. It could also be the emulsifier and lotions that help blend oils and water together. It could be so many different things. But today we're going to be talking about the four different types of surfactants and what they do and a little bit of how they're used in certain types of cosmetics. The first type of surfactant we're going to be talking about are anionic surfactants. These surfactants have negatively charged ions. So these are the surfactants that create the bubbly, lathery, foaming ingredients that we all love. But Unfortunately, anionic surfactants can be kind of irritating to the skin, which is typically why they're paired with another surfactant that also adds lather and foam and, you know, all that bubbliness that we all love. So the perks of anionic surfactants is that they are really inexpensive, they are good at removing dirt and oil, and they produce lots of foam. But thanks to science, we have a lot of anionic surfactants out on the market today that are actually a lot less irritating to the skin as opposed to anionic surfactants that we used to use such as sodium lauryl sulfate, also known as SLS. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that that's an ingredient a lot of people avoid. And that is an anionic surfactant that can be really irritating to the skin. But like I said, thankfully we have a lot of anionic surfactants that aren't irritating to the skin and are much more gentle and can even be used in baby products. So that's a great thing about anionic surfactants. They add lots of lather, they are inexpensive, and um, yeah, they help cleanse the skin. But unfortunately, some of them can be irritating. So just make sure you're looking out for the right type of surfactant if you're worried about causing irritation or just pair it with another surfactant, which is a type of surfactant we're gonna be talking about next. And those are amphoteric surfactants. So amphoteric surfactants have both negatively and positively charged ions, depending on their pH level. They have good detergency and are less irritating than anionic surfactants, which is why they're typically paired with anionic surfactants. They can help thicken a formula and make bubbles smaller and feel creamier. The drawbacks of amphoteric surfactants is that they are more expensive than anionic surfactants and they don't produce as much foam as anionic surfactants, which is why they're typically paired with anionic surfactants. So it helps draw back that irritation that might be caused by anionic surfactants. So keep in mind here that some amphoteric surfactants might work as like an emulsifier. So if you ever see a recipe, like a face wash recipe, where they're using two different types of surfactants, for example, an amphoteric surfactant and an anionic surfactant, and they have oils in that face wash as well, but they're not using an emulsifier. It's probably because that amphoteric surfactant is working as an emulsifier or solubilizer for that oil. But 
that's what I feel like is kind of confusing with surfactants is they just do so many different things and there's so many different surfactants out there. So when you're shopping for a surfactant, you really need to do your research on what it does, how it works, and then you also got to experiment with it as well. And you also got to keep in mind what it's compatible with and what it's not compatible with. So the next type of surfactant we're going to be talking about is non-ionic surfactants. So non-ionic surfactants have no charge at all. Some are great cleansers with lathery, foaming, and bubbly properties. They are good foam enhancers, which is why they're typically paired with anionic surfactants. So just like how amphoteric surfactants can be paired with anionic surfactants, non-ionic surfactants can also be paired with anionic surfactants. But again, here's where it gets confusing. There are some non-ionic surfactants that don't produce lather or foam or any of that bubbly cleanliness because it's actually an emulsifier. For example, if you've seen on my channel me using cocoa glucoside as a foaming agent like face washes or body washes, that's a non-ionic surfactant. But you know what else is a non-ionic surfactant? Emulsifying wax NF and Polo Wax, which those are emulsifiers used in lotions. So that's where it gets kind of confusing. It really all comes down to what their charge is. That's what makes a surfactant. So that is where it gets kind of confusing, I feel like, because a non-ionic surfactant can add lather, but also a non-ionic surfactant can be an emulsifier in a lotion. So you just need to keep that in mind that surfactants do more than just produce lather. They can be emulsifiers, solubilizers, so many different things. So another thing about non-ionic surfactants is that they are less irritating than anionic surfactants, which is another great perk of non-ionic surfactants. They're a common cleansing agent in baby products, and this is when we're talking about the bubbly kind of non-ionic surfactants, not like the emulsifying, thickening surfactant, like emulsifying wax and poly wax. But the reason why they're not a primary surfactant in like face washes and body washes and stuff where you're looking for a good lather is because they don't lather as much as an anionic surfactant does. So that is why they are commonly paired with an anionic surfactant. So basically, um, if you want to make a face wash, body wash, anything with lather, you want to grab an anionic surfactant and pair it with an amphoteric surfactant or non-ionic surfactant. That's typically what you want to do. And then when you're using a lotion, you're going to be using a non-ionic surfactant, which is an emulsifier and such like that. Hope this is making sense so far. For the last type of surfactant, yes, there is one more, there's four total. This type of surfactant is called a cationic surfactant. Cationic surfactants have positively charged ions. Cationic surfactants do not cleanse, rinse, or foam as well, and are more irritating. So they basically don't cleanse the skin or lather up or anything. Cationic surfactants are good for conditioners though, and they are primarily used in rinse off conditioners. So like I said at the beginning, how a surfactant can be your main ingredient and a conditioner that helps smooth your hair and detangle your hair, those are the cationic surfactants. So for example, that's like BTMS 50. I've used that on my channel before. That is a cationic surfactant that is commonly used in hair conditioners. So those are the four different types of surfactants. I'll go over them briefly real quick. Anionic surfactants produce lather, cleanse the skin, and they just have a good amount of lather but can be kind of irritating, which is typically why they're paired with amphoteric surfactants, which which produce lather, but not as much as an anionic surfactant. They could work as a solubilizer and emulsifier and also be producing lather at the same time, which could possibly be why you won't need an emulsifier when you're making a body wash or a face wash or something. Um, Non-ionic surfactants can be an emulsifier or a bubbly lathery cleansing agent in your product. So it could be something like emulsifying wax and F in a lotion, or it could be your bubbly cleansing agent in a face wash, as long as it's paired with an anionic surfactant. And last but not least, Cationic surfactants are basically uh, for hair conditioners. They can be used in lotions as well. And they are uh, something that helps soften, smooth out, and like detangle the hair or soften and smooth the skin. And they don't produce lather or cleanse the skin at all. I hope that made sense to you guys. If it didn't make sense, maybe try watching this over again and like jotting down notes a little bit. Because I think one of the hardest parts about understanding what these are is just learning the names. Because I'm like sitting here going, anionic amphoteric, non-ionic, cationic, and they all sound the same. They all have that ionic in it. So 
yeah, it's kind of confusing. So what might help is actually reading my blog to this. Also down in my description box, I will put examples to all these different types of surfactants and I'll put links to them so you can click on their links and read more about them to understand a little bit more because places like makingcosmetics.com or lotion crafters, places that sell these surfactants actually give so much details about these surfactants. It will tell you what their pH value is, what type of surfactant they are, what they're compatible with, if they help emulsify or solubilize. They give you so much information on the ingredients. That way you can understand exactly how to formulate it. A lot of times they will literally give you like an exact surfactant that goes well with it. So just check the links. And like I said, if this is a little bit confusing, maybe if you read over the blog, it'll make a lot more sense because sometimes just having something written in front of you can help make a lot more sense. Also on my blog, I have downloadable attachments so you can literally just print out the blog, keep it in your room, keep it in a little binder. That way you can just like refer back to it whenever you're formulating and you don't have to get back online, skim through my video, try to find the parts you need to re-listen to. <laughs> and it's just a lot easier when you have a piece of paper in front of you and you don't have to re-watch a video. So those are the different types of surfactants. Hope this makes sense to you guys. Um, if it doesn't, just re watch it, jot down notes, because this is really important to understand when formulating cosmetics. Like I said, surfactants are one of the most important ingredients in skincare products. They're used all the time. And sometimes you're using something that you don't even realize is a surfactant. <laughs> one more thing, I do sell homemade skincare products over on Etsy. I mention this in every single one of my videos, but I will link my Etsy shop down in the description box and I'll link it up here so it's easy for you guys to find. So I hope you all have a great week. Hope you're enjoying this series. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for videos in this series and I will see you guys next time. Bye. I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life It's still the path that I've chosen Because I've had a vision Now I'm on a mission to find myself with